Well, hello there, Crypto Wisers. It's your old friend Milton here. That's right, he's back. Flying solo today. Marvin is traveling. We've been having a hard time sticking in our schedules, but we wanted to start making videos. Okay, I couldn't wait for Marv. I got to start making videos. We got to start talking crypto seriously. Okay, guys. This is no time to be fooling around. No dilly-dallying anymore, okay? Bitcoin having countdown. 236 days, okay? This changes, you know, different sites have uh, this approximately a little bit different here or there, but uh, we're within range, okay? 236 days is going to fly by. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin, every four years, every block, the Bitcoin that gets mined gets cut in half, which creates a supply shock. That is what we call the Bitcoin cycle, okay? And we have always, always, always had a bull run sometime after the Bitcoin halving. Now, if you wait for the halving, you probably aren't going to be able to take advantage of the gains, Okay, so you want to be prepared. This is the time that you need to focus. This is the time where I'm going to be focused. I'm telling you that right now. I am focused. I am locked in. These next 236 days are going to be huge. Usually, I think, you know, if we go on uh, the last cycle here, uh, we zoom out. This is the Bitcoin daily chart for you guys who are just listening to the podcast. I'm just on the daily chart here and I'm just looking at uh, when the last uh, cycle happened. Okay, we had the having here in May of 2020 and then, uh, you know, things started getting a little bit spicy in August. We had the uh, DeFi summer, but then we went back down and it looked like, oh, maybe that was just going to be a fake out into September of 2020. Nope. Basically, from there, we went parabolic. We went uh, from about $10,000 Bitcoin all the way up to 69000 You know the all-time high. So we have been, since that all-time high, we have been in a brutal, brutal crypto winter here with some major, major crazy stuff happening. Bankruptcies, Celsius went down, FTX went down, and uh, that made our... Uh, low into the $15,000 range, but we've kind of slowly climbed up here. We went, uh, you know, we tried to get past 30, couldn't do it. Now we're back down in this $25,000 range, and I think we're going to be ranging here for a little bit a longer while. I'm saying between 20000 25000 This is, uh, for me, at least not financial advice, of course. I think this is a great range to be loading up on uh, Bitcoin and preparing yourself for what altcoins you want to buy. Which ones do you want to hold? What is going to be making you your next uh, fortune in the uh, bull run? And I'm going to be talking about that today. I'm going to be letting you know what, what altcoins I'm hanging on to right now. Uh, there's very few of them, to be honest. I do have a bunch of bags that I had from the old... Uh, bull run that I, you know, I, I, I've uh, hodled or, or, you know, just there hasn't been any reason to get rid of them because they basically went down to zero and I still have them. And, you know, if they go up again, beautiful, but I'm not counting on that. But I do have some bags that I do think in the next bull run are still going to uh, do well. But over the next few weeks and months, I'm going to be deciding, okay, what other alts do I think are going to do well in this next bull run now some of them are going to be kind of your names the biggest names on the market these days i'm definitely going to be leaving room for new tokens for new projects because as we know every bull run it tends to be the newer projects that actually have the biggest amount of gains but i do think that some of these names that we know of these days are worth holding on to are going to have some some uh, big uh, up action in the next bull run and they're less risky play because they've kind of proven themselves throughout the years. But we've also seen in past cycles, things that you thought were big names go to zero or just are dead zombie coins. So what's gonna be really important this bull cycle is figuring out, okay, what coins do you really believe in? And which ones are you just not gonna have? Cause with 20,000 something coins on the market, we can't own all of them. Okay, 
That is what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks, really preparing our portfolio for the next bull run. What do we want to hold on to? How much uh, cash do we want to have on the sides? What are we, how much are we DCing in, into? But we'll also go through some news, okay? Because uh, we got to stay up to date on what the projects are doing, what is happening in crypto. Hopefully be doing a bunch of interviews with, you know, with some of the altcoin projects to really get in and figure out what they've been doing this whole time. Now, if you're watching this video, you're happy that I'm back. If you're happy that CryptoWise is coming back, we're going to be coming back with some regular crypto content. I'm going to be pretty active on the old Twitter, the X, the new X. Um, you know, they've been doing a bunch of stuff on there. So make sure that you follow us there at CryptoWise Guys, at CryptoWise Guys. We had to revamp our whole account because we got, you know, we had scammers pretending to be us and then we got kicked off. This was pre-Elon. So... Make sure that you find us on X at Crypto Wise. Guys, follow along there because I'm going to be doing a ton of content on there as well. All right, guys, big news in Bitcoin today. This was huge. Okay, this came down to the wire a couple hours ago. Long awaited Bitcoin accounting rules to capture rises dips. Okay, this came out on Blue, BloombergTax.com. And this is something that Michael Saylor has been talking a lot about over, you know, since he started buying into crypto, which is, I guess, about two years ago now. And I was waiting for Michael to say something about it on his X account, and he did. Okay, 31 minutes ago at the time of filming, here he says, fair value accounting is coming to Bitcoin. This upgrade to FASB accounting rules eliminates a major impediment to corporate adoption of BTC as a treasury asset. Okay, this is huge because if you remember back, if you were in crypto a couple of years ago and you remember when MicroStrategies, Michael's company, started buying Bitcoin, putting it on their balance sheet. We thought that was going to open the floodgates. Okay. And it did a little bit. Okay. We had Elon bought some for Tesla. We know that SpaceX had some, still has a little bit on their balance sheet. But one of the major problems that Michael Saylor kept talking to us about was this accounting problem, which basically meant that if you were a company and you wanted to have Bitcoin on your balance sheet, for whatever arcane reason, whatever the lowest price that quarter of Bitcoin, that's what you had to basically say it was worth when you were doing your accounting. So if Bitcoin, you know, went dip down to 16K, but then bounced back up to 25K for whatever dumb reason, when you did your accounting and you had to say what your Bitcoin was worth, you had to price it at that 16K low for that quarter. So obviously a lot of corporations are like, well, we can't do that because it's going to make it look like we're doing way worse than we're actually doing. So this is a big deal, okay? This is one of those kind of just little news items that kind of slips through the wire, kind of hardly pay attention to it, and then you realize down the road how what a big, what a big uh, deal this is. I think this really opens up the door for... Uh, corporations all over the world but mostly in the u.s and the u.s is such an important market uh to be able to have a little bitcoin on their balance sheet do i think this is going to happen overnight no definitely do not i think this is going to take time i mean even here in this article it says that the rules will not go into effect until 2025 but it does say that the companies will have an option to apply them early so uh companies that already have bitcoin uh, like micro strategies will be able to do this, which is great for them. And uh, so, uh, but this oh, this is a huge change for the next bull run. When when we have when we see other companies starting to do this, trust me, there will at some point be uh, the floodgates will open. I think for corporations to have Bitcoin on their balance sheet, and uh, and I think that's just going to be you know it's just. It's it's huge because obviously with fixed supply, scarcity, any new use case for Bitcoin, and this was one that we thought was going to be a big one. And I still think this is going to be one of the biggest ones because it's a hedge against any other dollar, not just the U.S. dollar, any other currency. If you're a corporation, you know that the currencies are losing value because of inflation every year. Why not put even just a few percentages of your balance sheet into Bitcoin? Just makes a lot of sense. I think you're going to see this definitely in the next uh, two to three years. I think we're going to see this more and more and more. 
and that can coincide with the next Bitcoin all-time high. So uh, anyway, this is huge news for me, okay? I think this is huge, 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 great bull news. And of course, we're in a bear market still, or technically maybe we're kind of in the early bull market. But anyway, the price doesn't move on news like this. As we can see today, if we go to the hourly chart, oh, we did see a pump actually. I didn't even actually pay attention to this uh, because when the news came in, there wasn't any movement. Now we've seen that, yeah, you've gone up a few hundred bucks. And I think that's probably due to people realizing that this is very good news for Bitcoin. But we're still in this range. I don't think this is going to make a big difference in the short term, at least. Guys, this is a little trick if you're in uh, crypto or Bitcoin or both and, and you're feeling down, you know, you're like the market's not moving or my bags are down 90 percent. Have I made a huge mistake? What have I done believing in crypto? Well, I, you know what I love doing? I go down a little rabbit hole on YouTube and I watch Michael Saylor talk about Bitcoin and it just uh, <laughs> makes me feel a lot better about the thing. I don't know anyone who could make you feel better about owning Bitcoin than Michael Saylor. So if you're ever feeling down, just watch a few interviews <laughs> with Michael Saylor and, and you will feel a lot better about your Bitcoin bags. Okay, moving along. Let's another big uh, news item over the last day or two is the Solana and uh, Visa partnership, okay? So Visa, as we know, they've been experimenting with uh, settlement in USDC across Visa, and they've been doing this on Ethereum, but they've just said, and they've just announced that they're experimenting with Solana now. And this is huge for Solana, in my opinion. I'm gonna be talking about Solana a little bit later in the show because, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Solana is one of uh, the altcoins that I am definitely banking on for the next bull run. I think in terms of risk reward, they're one of the best out there. And the reason why Solana is, uh, you know, I think gained traction last bull run was they do have a good story to tell in just in terms of their transaction speed and how cheap it is. And so they kind of are the perfect partner here for Visa. So if this works out, I do think Solana is the perfect blockchain for Z for Z to be doing uh, settlements, especially of USDC. And I really think this is the big use case for Solana. You know, I don't think uh, in terms of DeFi, I think Ethereum is, is really just going to be because of the safety and, and security first mover advantage there. I don't see Solana being a huge kind of DeFi play in terms of, of, of having huge value or huge transactions, huge TVL on Solana. I see it more in the transactions, like things that you need really a lot of transactions and you want to do it as cheaply as possible. I think uh, that is what Solana does best. And so, yeah, I mean, if Visa starts, uh, if Solana becomes the number one blockchain for people using uh, Visa transactions, this could be huge. So this is the article here. It was on Business Wire. Dot com. Uh, it says that through live pilots with issuers and acquirers, Visa has already moved millions of USDC between its partners over the Solana and Ethereum blockchain networks to settle fiat-dominated payments, denominated payments authorized over Visa Net. And then if we uh, just scroll down here and we see adding support for the Solana blockchain network, as Visa looked to expand this capability to additional clients, there has been significant demand to leverage newer, high-performance blockchains that can send and receive stablecoins with higher speed and lower costs. For these reasons, Visa chose to add support for Solana. So that is huge. The Solana blockchain sees 400 millisecond block times, averages 400 transactions per second. 400 transactions per second. And I know Solana has gotten a bad rap. Wow, what a bad year Solana has had. Uh, it has been crazy. Let's just have a quick look at the uh, price action of Solana over the last year. It's at $19.63, but it's, it's kind of been bouncing around. No, thank you. All right, so if we look at the, uh, let's look at the last 180 days. Okay, not much there. Last year, uh, you know, this was the FTX right here, November 22 FTX 
bankruptcy happens and it was at $36 and we went all the way down to less than 10 bucks. Thing about uh, Solana though is FTX still owns a ton of Solana and I tweeted about this the other day and they're probably going to be selling that off over the next few weeks, next few months as it goes through bankruptcy. So I'm kind of holding off. I do own uh, some pretty large amounts of Solana already. I'm going to just hold those. I'm going to hold all those. I got them staked, so, you know, I'm earning more Solana. I was thinking about selling them because I do think the price is going to be hit by uh, by the FTX sale. But I think what I'm going to do more is just wait and see if that does happen, if there is a hit as the, as FTX sells their tokens. And I'll start slowing, slowly buying some more Solana because I do think that this Visa news is great news for them and proves that there is life for Solana after FTX. Um, another thing I just wanted to talk about quickly, this is because uh, I, I had, a, you know, most of the news out there, I have to say, is super bullish. But the bearish uh, story that I am following is Binance. Binance does worry me a little bit. All these, um, all these uh, lawsuits against them. And uh, Travis King, or Kling, Travis Kling here on X had this uh, tweet, which kind of summed up what I I'd kind of have been thinking of the last few weeks and months. He says, as summer officially draws to a close, you may have been o away from screens over the last few months. Below is a summary of the major negative events for Binance since December. It's helpful to see it all in one place. Next time someone tries to label the Binance situation as FUD, just reference this list. What happens to Binance is the single most important factor for crypto right now, and it is set to be front and center in the coming months. And so he's kind of laid it all down here in one easy kind of uh sheet cheat sheet here for all the things that have been kind of headwinds for binance you see a lot of executives have been leading leaving which is not great they've kind of lost uh you know uh, the ability to to kind of exist or operate in certain jurisdictions uh mastercard stopped working with them there's a whole bunch of things that have been happening to binance that is really the major kind of concern for me in terms of the last major maybe potential shoe drop uh, of these huge centralized crypto companies going down. And if Binance goes down, that is very bad for crypto. So that is, I'm kind of just keeping that in the back of my mind as all this other good news comes in. That goes back to what I was talking about before and the crypto Bitcoin having, uh, I do see us having one final leg down. If we go back to this daily chart, I, I maybe we don't go down under 20, but I do see us hitting 20 again. And certainly if we go down that far, we could potentially, again, retest these lows at 16. So part of my strategy over the next year or so is really to have a certain amount of cash on hand for if something major like Binance going down or some other major uh, catalyst to take us down further to test those lows, then I will certainly be stocking up at that point on Bitcoin and, uh, and Ethereum for sure. All right, just going through some other uh, noteworthy news here. MetaMask, if you guys haven't heard, MetaMask is uh, now you can sell. They just started this sell feature on MetaMask. So if you use MetaMask in the portfolio, the MetaMask portfolio, you can now actually sell your crypto and get fiat back straight into your bank account or PayPal. So, I mean, pretty huge. Other other wallets uh, you've been able to do this with um, or other apps or, or whatnot, but, you know, MetaMask is MetaMask. I do think it is still the best, uh, most popular decentralized wallet. And if you're someone who wants to be going back and forth into crypto and out of crypto, that's pretty great. And um, it's a pretty great free feature. So, again, it just kind of shows, you know, this is this is building time for the companies that are, are, are going to be around. Uh, and MetaMask, I think, is certainly one of them. And so I think this is, again, bullish news. So, you know, overall, most of the news, news that has been coming out has been super bullish 
Um, all right. And the other big, obviously, elephant in the room, in the crypto room, is Grayscale. And them winning their case against the SEC, meaning that uh, we are one step closer to a Bitcoin ETF, spot ETF. And uh, again, this is going to be, in my opinion, huge uh, for Bitcoin once this happens. I think it is. I agree with everyone else. I think it's inevitable that it happens sometime in the next year before the halving, uh, which means, again, you know, I don't want to be waiting for that news. I don't want to be buying after that news comes out and Bitcoin's back up into the 40s. Uh, I don't want to be like, damn. I wish I had bought more at 25 or in the 20, 20, 25 range. So, you know, just keeping your eye out on this. This could happen a lot faster than we even think it can happen. So that's the one thing I'm keeping in the back of my mind. Even though I do think Bitcoin has a chance to go down again to 20,000, maybe even test those lows at 16,000. The other side of that story is maybe it doesn't. And maybe the spot ETF gets approved. And then, then we see ourselves you know, go above that 30 mark, which has really been big resistance for Bitcoin. And once we break that, then, you know, it's not too far until we get to 3840. And then maybe that's kind of the new low until the next bull run. So uh, I'm hedging my bets, even though I'm going to have certainly a certain amount of fiat waiting in case there is that big down. I am still DCAing into my Bitcoin every week. Um, because I do still think at 25, under 26, this is a great opportunity uh, for uh, accumulating, accumulating Bitcoin. All right, so those are kind of the major stories that have been going on uh, that I wanted to talk about today, uh, kind of uh, just talk about what's going on here. So, but I do want to have a look at my portfolio, which is very small right now. Okay, so I'm going to be, as I say, as we do videos here, I'm going to be updating this over the next few weeks and months all the way through the halving into, into the next bull cycle. So you guys know, you know, exactly kind of what bags I'm holding, which ones I'm looking at. So today I'm just going to go very simply through what bags I kind of have still. Okay, and again, I do have, I have a ton of, of bags, and Marv always makes fun of me because, he, you know, he calls me a hoarder, because he's right. I, you know, I don't ever really sell my full bags. I'll take profits here and there, but if I believe in a project, I, I usually hang on to it, and, and, and sometimes that works out, uh, and other times it doesn't, and uh, so I do have, I have more than these bags, but the other bags I have, I'm not really expecting them to bounce back. But for sure, part of my bull run portfolio for 2025, obviously the blue chippers, Bitcoin, Ethereum, no brainers, have to have them. Now, what will be interesting is talking through with you guys what, okay, what percentage do I want to have in those? And that's going to fluctuate. So I will at some point as we lead into the next bull run be heavier in alts. And then as I take profit, I'm going to want to be at the end of the next bull run uh, towards the end of 2025, I'm going to want to have a certain percentage in the Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I, in my, you know, I have for you, depending on the size of your portfolio, that might mean X amount of Bitcoin, X amount of Ethereum. For me, I have in my mind, okay, I want to get by the end of the next bull run, I want to have X Bitcoin, and X Ethereum. Um, but I'm going to be heavily into alts at some point and taking profits into those two towards the end. Layer zeros, layer ones, and layers two. Right now, the ones I know 100% that I'm having, I'm going to add to these. So if you're out there and you love Avalanche or you love Phantom or Algorand, whatever, those guys might be added to this. I'm still on the fence, uh, fence uh, for, for those. But uh, right now I know Polkadot, obviously, if you watch this channel, you know that I love Polkadot. Polkadot really has, hasn't had its time yet. I am really hopeful that the next bull run, Polkadot will be ready to take advantage. Still believe in that. So obviously a huge bag of Polkadot. Solana, which I've talked about again already on this video, I think in terms of risk reward, based on what's already built, how 
badly beaten up it got because of FTX. I think Solana's a no-brainer too. Uh, Polygon's a bit new for me. I'm new to the Polygon uh, bandwagon. I, I owned a little bit of it, you know, back in even, you know, back when it was Matic. But I've been I've been adding a little bit to my Polygon bags, and, and for me, it is it has solidified itself as kind of a must own for the next uh, bull cycle. I think I do lean Polygon over any of the other layer twos. So I've got that. Now, my wild card in this, you might have your own version of this. Mine is Multiverse X. Uh, Alrond, it used to be called. Uh, you know, I've been from the very beginning on this project. Uh, I, I really like it. Uh, I like the team. I like what they're building. It's a long shot, though. This is definitely one of my riskier plays, but I, I'm sticking with it. Speaking of uh, Multiverse X, uh, Benjamin, uh, who kind of runs, you know, he's the the, the uh, big wig there, Multiverse X, Benjamin Menku. Uh, he had a town hall, which was a great town hall the other day. Uh, I watched I watched the whole thing. Uh, at Norden Trades here on X had a great, he, he did a great uh, thread on, on kind of the highlights of it. I won't go through the whole thing in today's video, but he, he lays out what he really liked about it. And his number one thing is also my number one thing, which is they seem to be really focusing now in on becoming the European blockchain. And I think this is a good strategy for these other layer ones is zero in on a geographical area where you've made some headwind headway and, and you think you can grow from there. It's hard. Yeah, like it's I think it's just too hard to try to kind of uh, compete with the Ethereum's on a global level right away. I think if you kind of uh, create more of a geographical focus for yourself and I really like Multiverse X saying we are working on becoming in the European blockchain of choice. That's where they've gained most of their traction so far already. And I think it's it's uh, really smart of them to kind of focus in on that. You know, who knows? Still a huge uphill battle for them. Uh, there's so many, so much competition in layer ones. But I, I'm taking a risk on them. I think they've they've. I, I've I've watched them very closely from the beginning. I do believe that they can survive this this uh, crypto winter and be very well positioned into the next bull run if they can uh, um, kind of keep building the way that they have. And and one thing I like about them is they they're really good to p at pivoting. So they kind of hit a snag and then you see them pivot. Even the whole branding from Elrond to Multiverse X, I like it. And now pivoting being like, we're going to really focus in on Europe. I think that's a good call. So that's why I have them uh, still. I've kept that bag and I'm going to hold it through the next bull run. Again, I'm staking. The great thing with the layer ones and, and zeros and twos is you could stake and, and accumulate. You don't necessarily have to keep DCAing into them if they're kind of a riskier play like Multiverse X is for me. You know, I stake it. I'm happy to get more and more through this crypto winter. And then if, the, you know, it's like I've been DCAing into it. In terms of DeFi, and, and you know, I've got Chainlink here, but it's not really DeFi. It's an Oracle project. I throw it under DeFi, whatever. Uh, I, I've got Chainlink and Uniswap really as my only two projects that I'm going to uh, have in here right now. Again, this is a section I will add to. But I, I've substantial bags in both. I'm keeping them, holding them, and I believe in, in them uh, kind of as no-brainers through the next bull run. Chainlink did really lead off the last bull run. So I'm going to be interested. It's going to be interesting to see which project this time is kind of the catalyst that sends the altcoins. Last time it was Chain, Chainlink. Maybe it is again. Uh, or maybe it's uh, something else. Web3 Gaming, I'm going to talk more about this. I got Photo Finish here and their crown token. I'll talk about that in a second. Dot Alt, as you guys know, I talk a lot about Dot on the channel. And uh, last cycle, I, I loaded up on some of the altcoins. They really had didn't, didn't have their day uh, as the Dot ecosystem just wasn't ready for the last bull run. 
But Kilt, Unique, Integrity, A Star, those are the four projects that I uh, still really believe in in terms of Dot. And if Dot can do what I think it can do in the next bull run, I'm holding on to these bags and I do expect them to have a turnaround. Whereas some of the other bags I have, I don't expect that. And again, I just threw this down here, new alts, just to know that in every bull cycle, there are new projects that are going to be huge winners. And I want to make sure that I have enough room in my portfolio to be adding those as I find them. All right, so that's just a start to the portfolio. Long way to go. I think we got a lot of time here. We got over, uh, you know, just under a year until the halving. So over the next weeks and months, I'll be adjusting this. I'll be updating you guys. Who do I add? I doubt I'll take these. These ones are pretty much uh, kind of set here in stone. I doubt any of these will be taken away, uh, but certainly lots will be added. So going back to this Web3 gaming, I, I think gaming is going to be huge. To me, it's a no-brainer that gaming is 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 a huge uh, use case for crypto, and I think it's ready. I think we have so many teams working on on amazing games that should be ready for the next bull run. But I do want to shout out Photo Finish because what they've been doing in this bear run is amazing, and I'm. So this is a game that is been, it's a horse racing ecosystem essentially. Uh, I talked a lot about it. As they came through when they launched their, uh, when we talked about NFTs, we talked about uh, Photo Finish a lot. One of the very first kind of NFT collections that I got, I really got into on Solana. And they have been building something really special here. Now, you might be into a different game. I actually, I really want to hear from you, Crypto Wisers. What Web3 games are you actually playing? Because the reason I have Photo Finish down here is I play it. I got my horses, I race them. Uh, I'm really into it. Uh, photo finish dot live. If you, if this is new, new, uh, to you, definitely recommend checking them out. If you're in a horse racing at all, which, which I was like in real life, I love going to the horse races. Uh, you know, my whole life I've really been going to them. And so this is kind of why this game really kind of spoke to me right away. They've done such an amazing job. I think this, this, this is, uh, they've created such a great foundation right now in the bear, uh, market that I, I just only see them growing and growing and growing, but partly why they're in my portfolio. And this is what I think for the gaming and why I want to hear what games you're playing. Cause I want to start playing even more games is if you play them, if you're into them, it's just a great way to actually make money <laughs> to be honest, because photo finish for me. Yeah. I thought it was a great investment. I believed in the team and everything, but I was just playing it. I was into the game and their crown token, okay, this is one of their game tokens, in-game tokens, only from owning the NFTs, staking, playing the game, that's the only way I've been accumulating my crown. And, you know, I have a fair bit of it now. It, it, it adds up. And for the most part, while I was playing that game, it was down at five cents, you know, for months. And I didn't care. I didn't even know. I didn't think it would move until the bull run. But uh, all of a sudden, it started moving. People started, you can see the volume here. People are starting to find this game. And all of a sudden, my crown token went from $0.05. Cents, it went up almost to $0.40. Cents. Uh, all time high here, it's uh, saying $0.86. Cents. That, I think, was probably just like a little tiny blip. Uh, but really, it was like within thir 30 to 40 cents. It was there for a bit. Now, it's come back down. It's at 20 cents right now. But still, that's a 4x from, from 5 cents. And I think this is just started, just starting to get ready. So I think this is just a great lesson. You know, you got it. If you in there, if you're using crypto, some of your best plays will just be accidental just from actually using the stuff. And that happened with all the airdrops last uh, bull cycle. A lot of airdrops that I got was just because I was just using the stuff. All of a sudden I got airdrops that were worth, you know, a substantial amount of money. So I think I just really say this over and over again on this channel. It's just like get your hands dirty in crypto because you just never know. And if you really like something, odds are other people are going to find it because it probably means that the team is doing a great job building it. And that is definitely the case with Photo Finish Live. I'm really hoping that we can get Ian, who is one of the creators, one of the main creators of Photo Finish on the channel. Uh, 
in the near future to talk about it. Uh, and, and hopefully that will be an interview that other NFT projects can listen to and, and get some advice on how they can go, you know, and build slow, keep slowly building. Cause I really think that NFTs are here to stay. Gaming is here to stay. And this is great proof of one of the projects that really does work and prove that it's not just a bubble. It wasn't just a bubble. It wasn't just a fad. Stuff will be here. Once the quality is built, the stuff is going to be here to stay. And this is a perfect example of that. All right, guys. Well, that's kind of all I wanted to say today. It's just nice to be back talking crypto. It was actually, you know, I thought going to be a slow day in crypto. And then that's the thing. There's no slow days in crypto. Okay. There's 20,000 projects out there. They're all building. There's going to be news. There's adoption coming, institutional adoption based on today's news of this uh, accounting rules change. I think that's a game changer. So there's going to be a ton of stuff to talk about. Uh, Marv's going to be back eventually, but, uh, if he's not unable to come be on, I'm going to jump on and do these videos. Hopefully you guys, uh, will start watching again. And cause I want to get your opinions. Like what have you been doing during this bear, bear, uh, crypto winter? What are you doing? What are you looking at? What portfolio, what games are you playing? I really want to hear from you so that we can get this crypto conversation going again. I miss you guys. There's nothing I love more than talking crypto with my crypto wisers. Again, if you don't follow us yet on X, aka Twitter, please do at crypto wise guys. Say hello. Uh, you know, let me know there what you're thinking about, what alts you're into, what games you're into, and all that kind of stuff at Crypto Wise Guys. All right, guys, until next time, this has been Milton saying over and out.